Hello students, my name is Bruno Mrigo. Today we are going to discuss the topic of production and the subtopic we are going to discuss is the factors of production. And basically in this subtopic we are going to concentrate much on the theories of uh, factors of production. And especially the subtopic or the, the theory we are going to discuss under this subtopic is the marginal productivity theory. So our subject is economics and the topic is production. The subtopic is the factors of production and the concept you are going to discuss is among the theory which is marginal productivity of a factor. So theories of theories of factors of production and we are going to look on the uh, marginal marginal productivity A theory, the marginal productivity theory. So before we start to discuss this theory, uh, let us uh, make an overview of uh, the theories of factors production. Now in economics, when we are talking about the theories of factors of production, Basically, we are talking about four factors of production. We have four factors of production, uh, which is land, labor, capital and the uh, organization. Or we can say entrepreneurship. So basically we have four factors of production, which is land, labor, capital, and the organization or entrepreneurship. Now, under the theory of factors of production, we're going to discuss uh, on how the price of these factors is being determined, or how the price of these factors of production are being determined. So. The theories of factors of production or theories of factors of production are uh, examines. how the price of factors of production are determined. We know that the prices of these factors, for instance, for rain, for rent is rent and for labor is a uh, wage and for capital is interest and for organization or entrepreneur 
is profit. So, uh, these are prices of these factors of production. The, lab, the land is rent, labor is wage, capital is interest, and the organization is profit. Now, let us see how FMs or how economists determine the price of these factors of production by considering the marginal productivity of the factor. How a firm will determine the price of these factors by using this theory of marginal productivity uh, of a factor. So as we know, when we say marginal productivity or marginal product, so uh, let us start by looking the marginal marginal product. Okay, marginal product is the addition. Ah. Uh, is the addition to total product resulted due to employing one more unit of a factor. So when we employ one more unit uh, of factor, the output which resulted due to employing this unit of factor we call it as a marginal product. And the marginal product marginal product of a factor the marginal product of a factor will be equal to change change in total product as a change in the factors of production okay you take change in total product of a change in the factor, which is equal to a total product one minus total product not over factor one minus factor two. So the marginal product will be obtained by taking the differences or the change in differences between the total product and the change in the factor which is employed. Now, as we said, we'll concentrate on the marginal productivity theory. So, marginal productivity uh, theory states that the marginal productivity theory states that the demand the demand for labor, for labor for or for a factor, the demand for a factor 
the demand for a factor depends depends on its marginal productivity so the demand for a factor or the demand for labor or whatever depends on the on its marginal productivity so if we are talking about labor it means the demand for labor will depend on its marginal productivity or if you are talking about the factor capital it means the demand for capital will depend on its marginal productivity and uh, the marginal productivity as we said before is the addition total product resulted due to employing one more unit of a factor so an employer a firm will employ more unit of labor depends on its marginal uh, marginal productivity now under this theory the equilibrium and uh, this theory know that uh, the firms and uh, this theory uh, the firm will pay the factor will pay the factor the price which is equal to marginal revenue productivity firms under uh, firms which is operating under this market will pay the factor of production uh, the wages or price which is equal to the MRP which is marginal revenue productivity so MRP MRP the same as a marginal revenue productivity so firms will pay the factor the price which is equal to marginal revenue productivity so now how we can get this marginal revenue productivity so now how we can get this marginal revenue productivity the marginal revenue productivity will be equal to marginal product of a factor uh, times the price or times the marginal uh, revenue so to find the marginal revenue productivity you take the marginal product of a factor times uh, the, the 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 marginal revenue or times the price of a particular product so let us consider the following table consider the following table Uh, here, let's say, assuming now the factor we are talking is labor, and here is the total product,
and here labor total product then here is the price of the product and here is the marginal product now let us assume the labor which is employed is 1 2 3 4 5 6 So now let us assume this is the number of labor or the factors of production which we employ is labor and this is the total product of labor and this is the price of this product and uh, MP be the same as the marginal product and it will take between the change in total product so here will be dash when you find the difference here will be 8 and here when you find the difference when you take the changes it will be 10 and here when we find the difference, it will be 8. And here the difference will be 3. And here the difference will be 1. So these are the marginal uh, product. And the wage of the labor, let's assume is constant, let's say is 60, so here is 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. So the theory assumes that we are operating under perfect market competition, so the wage will be constant, also the price of the product will be constant. So here the wage is 60. Is constant and the price of the product is 20 which is constant in all situations. So you can find now the marginal revenue product so the marginal revenue product MRP, this will be obtained by taking the marginal product times the price. So here I said the price or marginal revenue, it means under perfect market, the price is equal to marginal revenue. So the same as the taking marginal revenue times the marginal product. So you'll take the uh, marginal product times price of the product. So in this case here will be dash since here we don't have the value of MP and uh, here will be 20 times 8 will be 160 and uh, here will be 20 times 10 
which is 200 and here is 20 times 8 which is 160 and here is 20 times 3 which is 60 and here is 20 times 1 which is 20 so as we said before that the firm will pay the wage or the price of the factor will be equal to the marginal revenue productivity. So you can compare between the wage and the marginal revenue productivity. So you can see at this point the marginal revenue productivity is equal to the wage. So the firm will employ a, this unit of labor which is five. So if the firm is aiming to maximize the profit, will follow this rule. If it is following the rule of profit maximization, so will employ when the um, marginal revenue productivity of labor is equal to the wage. And the, way the, 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 the labor which will be employed is five units. So this will be the equilibrium. Uh, this will be the equilibrium of the firm. So now, A uh, graphical, graphical you can show like this one. At the vertical axis, at the vertical axis, you put the wage rate or you put the uh, marginal revenue productivity and the horizontal axis will put the factors uh, unit of a factor or in this case is labor. So when you draw this uh, marginal revenue productivity, the curve of this one will be like this one. So this will be the MRP. So when you sketch the graph of this one, it will be like that. And we said that since we are operating under perfect competitive market, the wage will be constant. So uh, here, let's say is our wage, which is 60 will be constant, so go horizontal and will intersect the MRP curve. So at the point of intersection, here is MRP will be equal to the wage. So this is the wage, right? So here you determine the 
number of factor or the number of labor which will be employed, which is uh, five units. So when you show graphical, this information will be like this one. So at this point, it means FM will demand this uh, number of labor since the marginal revenue productivity of labor is equal to the price of the labor. So this is how we can explain our theory by using a uh, graphical and here is the table uh, which shows the analysis of how this uh, theory is working. So there are some assumptions to consider in order for this theory to work. So there are some assumptions you need to consider in order for the theory to work. So the assumptions Assumptions number one is that we assume that Dela is Dela is a perfect perfect mobility of of the factors, factors of production. So the first assumption that we assume there is perfect mobility of the factors of production is that there is homogeneous of the factors of production. So the factors of production are homogeneous. It means they are equal in strength or in its productivity. Also, The second, we assume that it operates under the law of variable proportions. Or it operates under the law of who? diminishing returns. So as you can see here, the marginal revenue productivity increased then declining. So when declining, it means it operates the row of diminishing returns or the row of variable proportions. And four, uh, it assumes it operates under perfect competition market. So both uh, product market and factor market operates under perfect competition. And the last It assumes it assumes a uh, it assumes a uh, sub two. Stability, sub 
substitutability of the factors. So, it is possible to substitute the factors of production, especially uh, when capital is cheaper than labor or when labor is cheaper than capital, you can substitute uh, either of the factors. So, these are the assumptions you need to consider when you are discussing this uh, theory. So, uh, now let us have a break then we will back to solve some uh, practical problem to see how this uh, theory be applied. Okay, now let us look at this problem. Uh, the question says, suppose a firm is a monopsonist in the market for a labor at W is equal to 10 plus 4L. If the marginal revenue productivity MRP of the labor is 100 minus L. Now, how many workers will the firm employ? The two, what wage rate will it pay? Okay, so the data which we are given, we are given that wage which is 10 plus 4L. And we are given the MRP equals to 100 minus L. So you are asked to calculate how many workers will the firm employ. As our theory stated that uh, the firms will employ the workers at equilibrium when the marginal revenue productivity is equal to the price of a factor. So as our theory, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, the marginal Revenue productivity MRP must be must be equal to price of a factor. So in this case, from our question, the factor we are given is uh, labor. So, and the price of labor is wage. So under this case now, the wage or the price of a worker is wage, and which is given by this function, which is 10 plus 4, and the Marginal revenue productivity of that labor is 10, as well as 100 minus L. So at equilibrium, it means uh, MRP should be equal to wage. So you will equate these two equations. So the MRP will be 100 minus L, which will be equal to wage. The wage here is 10 plus 4L. So you will collect the likely terms. Collect the likely terms. Uh, this one comes this side. So it will be 100 minus 10, which will be equal to 4L plus L. So when you subtract uh, 10 from 100, will remain with 90 equals to, when you add, it will be 5R. So dividing both sides by, when you divide both sides by 5, uh, L will be equal to 90 divided by 5, uh, which will be equal to 
So when you take 90 divided by 5, it will be equal to 18. So for the case of Roman 1, how many workers will the firm employ? So therefore, the firm will employ 18 workers. So in order to maximize the profit, the firm should employ 18 uh, workers. Again, Roman 2, we asked what wage rate will it pay? So we know our uh, wage rate equation is this one. We know wage equals to 10 plus 4L. So to get the wage rate that a firm will be uh, going to pay, you need to substitute the number of uh, labor in this equation. So the wage will be equal to 10 plus 4 bracket times 18 which is the same as 10 plus, uh, here when you multiply, will be equal to uh, 2 72. So when you add 10 plus 72 will be 82. So the wage rate will be equal to 82 shillings. So this is how we can apply our theory to solve uh, some problems uh, like this one which we are given. So dear my students, make sure that we review all the theories uh, of factors production and make sure that you know the application of those uh, theories, especially in determining the wages or in how the firms can determine the wages to be paid to the factors of production or what level of output should a firm produce in order to maximize the profit so this uh, theory is very important, especially in uh, doing some decisions, especially what level of output produced or how many workers to employ or what wage rate or the wage rate a firm should pay. So uh, this theory will guide you to discuss other theories. So for today, we'll end here. Thank you for following this lesson. I hope you will revise this concept. So next, we'll meet and discuss uh, another theory. So thank you. Make sure that you revise other theories. Goodbye.